Greetings and salutations. It is Friday, November 28th, and today I'm going to very briefly talk to you about uh, the new dungeons. So, let's go to Atlas. So, um, we'll just kind of go in order that they appear on my screen. So the first one is Upper Blackrock Spire, which we kind of talked about yesterday. Um, so, Upper Black Rock Spire, I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough of all of them, not tell you about any achievements, not really explain. I'm going to explain the bosses a little bit, um, and yeah, it should be fun. So, uh, you enter here, you clear these two rooms, these two rooms, and this room. These two are empty and blocked, I think. Then you go through, then that allows you to go through here. And then you come through here, and you kill this boss. Now, this boss has um, traps that are electrified, and you have to click all of them for him to spawn, and then once you do that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, he will, uh, once you do that, he'll spawn, you start fighting him, and then partway through the fights, um, he'll kind of get protected by this shield, like he was at the beginning, and you have to send DPS, DPS, send DPS, um, to run around, Partic pre preferably someone who either has some off heals or can shield themselves or can move very quickly, um, because it is very hard for the healer to have to go and heal them. You don't want to send your healer, and you don't want to send your tank. Uh, and then once you're done fighting him, you will come in here, you will fight this boss. This boss um, is a pain in the ass. The ads are, the ads need to die first. And then once they are dead, um, you will need to dispel something on him. He has a thing that comes up and it pops up. You have DBM for you to dispel, so make sure you're dispelling that on him. He will shoot uh, serum on the ground that you have to step out of. And he will fixate on people and that needs to be interrupted. And once you're done fighting him, you'll come up here, which will lead you here, you'll go around. And then you will come through here. I would recommend going through this way, pulling to what trash you can. There's one patrol that you can either avoid or pull. Stick to this wall. And then the third boss is in here, and it's kind of gauntlet-ish. You'll fight a bunch of waves of enemies. Keep in mind that there are flying guys, so range DPS, you want to make sure that you're getting rid of those guys because they will shoot stuff onto people, and nobody will have aggro, so you can't really avoid it. So just make sure the guys that are flying get shot. Um, healers, if nobody is attacking them or if you only have melee, uh, just throw a couple dots and they'll get down to melee level. Then you're going to come around. There's a thing in here that you can fight. You, uh, I don't think you absolutely have to, but you can. Then there is another Drake here. This guy was pretty straightforward. I don't remember much about this guy. I only fought him once, though. I don't remember there being anything really particular about this fight. Um, oh, right, he's on a bridge. Um, <clears throat> sorry, it took me a second. He's on a bridge, and he does a flame attack where you need to hug near both the doors. It's preferable if everybody picks one side um, for the breath attack, because if you're on opposite sides and someone gets hit, it's really hard to heal. And then you just have to avoid not standing in the fire. Or avoid standing in the fire. There we go. Okay, and then Warlord Zayla is a pain. I've never actually beaten her. Um, I don't think. She herself is pretty easy. Um, she has a whirlwind attack that you just have to avoid, but she will leave partway through and these two drakes will come for the second half of the fight and they'll stay there. And they will just, so the, the, the thing itself is a square, and they will position themselves on an end and breathe fire all the way across. But there's another one that could be standing here. And usually they'll either be um, left, middle, or right, and then top, middle, or bottom, and they'll kind of situate themselves. They could be side by side, which is annoying, but just, you have to avoid that, because if you stand in it very long, it will kill you, so try not. You can see where they're going to land, and then just try and keep your eye on where the drakes are at all times, and get out of the way. Um, yeah, so that's it for Upper Black Rock Spire. The next one we will talk about is... Draenor. Auchindoon. Um, Auchindoon is a pretty easy one. So you're going to go straight, you're going to veer left. Um, so Vigilant Cathar is the first boss, and he will drop down um, a shield that you'll have to hide behind when he does a specific move, but he's, aside from that he's not very difficult. Um, and you'll fight the second boss here. She um, does a lot of uh, Shadow Word pains on people, so just make sure that you, can, you get those dispelled because they hit pretty hard. And then the third boss is here. He has portals and they summon demons and you wanna just make sure you get adds fairly quickly. If you can have the, if you can keep, um, if you have a bunch of range, just keep them near the portal where the adds are gonna spawn um, and then just burn them down as quickly as possible. Um, unless you have a really crazy DPS, in which case just focus the main guy. Then you'll do this little thing where you'll wander around, you'll fight all these different types of warlocks. And then the center guy, uh, Terangor, uh, he will, 
drain um, one of the uh, warlock the, the spirits that he has behind him and he'll gain either demonology destruction or affliction abilities um, the only thing that I really remember from him was there is a big ad that can spawn um, and what if the big ad spawns like a big uh, like earth fiery elemental guy I don't remember what they call them I don't remember the actual name of him it's like big and green and greeny fire and it's like it looks like rock anyway um, just get one of your ranged DPS to kite him or you in melee just get someone or the healer just get someone to kite him and then just focus on the boss and then you don't have to worry about him don't worry about trying to kill me as way too much health in my opinion all right next is rock rock foundry that was a raid I think maybe yeah I think that's a raid so yeah because Hamel's on here okay so slag mines uh, we kind of talked about this one yesterday we were talking about chroman if you're not fighting chroman then just go one two three four if you are fighting chroman you have to go two one three four um so we'll go the way that they will tell you assuming you're going to chroman so you're going to go this way first and you're going to grab you're going to kill him and the only thing i can remember about him is that he summons ads so just kill the ads uh this guy there's two phases there's two bosses um, when the Forge Master kind of gets down to like 1% or whatever, uh, the new guy will come from the furnace. Um, just don't stand and step on the ground. That's pretty much it. There's some stuff to dispel throughout this one. Uh, this guy I talked about in depth yesterday. There is, he calls down uh, Molten Slag onto the ground, so you just have to not step in that, and then he calls down Rock. And uh, it will roll from where he is standing to the end of the bridge and then back on the same side. It'll be Le right, left, right, or middle. So just pay attention to where it's dropping, and then just make sure remember that it's coming from behind you. And then this guy, uh, Gugrock, Gugrock is uh, kind of a pain. He's not super hard. Um, he drops these circles on the ground that you you can't stand in. And there's elementals that come um, like ads, but they're really easy to kill. Um, the only thing I will say about this guy is he drops the little circles in the ground that you have to avoid wherever party members are so if you stay clumped together and you just kind of move in like a counterclockwise or clockwise motion around and just kind of drag him that way then you're never going to be in the same spot and it'll be easier uh healers if you are using some type of like like for holy priest if you when you're using your light well just drop it right in the middle it'll reach um but yeah that's pretty much it for this one this one's pretty easy uh everbloom i freaking hate everbloom so you come in through here you're gonna go this way first and witherbark is you know, relatively easy you're gonna kill a bunch of ads around him first there are secret paths in order to avoid stuff i may just do a walkthrough of where all the secret areas are um at some point because it's much easier than having to kill all the freaking trash so you're gonna fight him and then um he as you fight him you're lowering his water reserve essentially and he'll he's a big tree and he'll eventually become dehydrated and brittle and then there's going to be aqua globes like water globes that are going to come and um, try and rehydrate him kill them as fast as possible while burning down the boss and when he uh, you can prolong that phase because as soon as he's brittle he takes way more damage um, so if you can get all of your DPS or all of your like range to target them keep your melee on the boss keep your tank on the boss and have your healer throw dots as much as possible or something um, on the boss, it'll be pretty easy. Just let your DPS or even your just your melee DPS worry about the uh, globes or something like that. And then there's a uh, uh, uncontrolled growth on the ground that he throws at you. Just make sure not to stand in that. And then if the water globe hits the uncontrolled growth, um, an ad will spawn. Uh, the next, then you'll jump down here and you'll go around and you will fight the. Well, actually, you'll, if you go secretly, you'll kind of go over here and around and avoid all this. But um, the ancient protectors are a group of three, and it's basically two ads and the main guy. Um, the Earth Shaper and Life Warden you want to kill first, and they, they'll they need dispels, they'll need interrupts, uh, Dolhu will as well, I think party members also need dispels occasionally. Um, there are things on the ground to avoid, and that's pretty much it, just don't stand in the fire, or if it's not really fire, it's like earthy stuff, whatever. Um, and then you can kill the spider guy, he's, op he's an optional boss, you don't have to fight him. If you are fighting him, godspeed. He does, um, there's a intro thing where he just spawns a bunch of ads and spiders and you need to kill them and then when you're fighting him don't stand in the poisonous gas and when keep your eyes out everyone keep your eyes out for the pale orcs that come running um 
once he once he get they get close he will consume them to uh, regain health so make sure that you either mark them or you call it out or you just start attacking the orc that comes running out the pale orc or whatever they're called um because it if he heals you're going to be there forever and it'll just take way too long uh and then three here i would honestly say do four first and then do three um archmage soul is a mage and she the ads around here are annoying as hell so just pull them like one group at a time don't do a massive pull unless you have really good dps and a very good tank and healer because Okay, so she will start with fire, and she will throw these fire flowers on the ground that will deal radius of damage that you just have to jump over. Um, then she will cast frost, and she will try and freeze everyone. And then arcane isn't that hard. Um, it's time. It's not percentage based. It's time based. Um, oh no, I lied. Okay, so she will periodically start to cast parasitic growth. I don't exactly know what that does, but if you interrupt it, she'll change to the next magic school. Um, if you can keep her in flame. If you can heal through parasitic growth and keep her in flame as long as possible or keep her in frost as long as possible that's pretty ideal or if you if you don't if you're having people that aren't jumping to avoid the fire flower thing then just avoid it then just interrupt it and try and keep her on frost or arcane i found keeping her on fire was easy as long as people were jumping and then you're going to go through b which is a portal which will take you to here and this is the last boss yalnu yalnu you don't you kind of directly fight him but you're more worrying about you guys are like the secondary people and so there's a big group of Kirin Tor mages, and there's going to be there's like three or four things you really need to make sure. He does a big slam move that you absolutely need to avoid, um, and it's big and brown on the ground. Big and brown, and the ground is breaking where it's going to be. So just GTFO when you see that. Um, there will be uncon there will be um, uncontrolled growth or like vines on various Kirin Tor mages throughout the fight kill those vines and keep them keep those mages alive so that they can cast really strong spells at Yelnu. Um, healers, if someone gets grabbed in the vines, just top them up on health. Normally they shouldn't get attacked, so you should be able to heal them pretty easily. And the only other thing is, partway through there's a part called... And I'm not going to be able to remember the name of it. But it's a move that he does. Is it on here? Yeah, okay, so he does this move, and it looks, it kind of looks like uh, that druid move that heals everyone in a big area, and I can't remember what the name of it is. But what you're going to do is, um, there's going to be these little flowers on the ground. Grab any speed boost you can, all DPS and healers. Your job is to run around over and trample them. If you don't trample them, they they jump up into adds. Um, there will be adds that spawn during this fight. They're not very difficult. Uh, tank, just make sure you grab them, and then you can kind of AoE them down. Um, but those ones you really need to make sure you avoid. So as soon as that happens just start running and like trampling over all those flowers but that's it for everbloom uh Grimrel depot is tricky but not impossible um so you're gonna fight the first guy and there's two guys rocket spark and borka uh they need to die close to the same time within like maybe a minute but borka absolutely no, 30 seconds but the brute absolutely the big order guy absolutely needs to die first um you 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 really but and it, he just he has to die first he does too much damage um don't stand in the slam the reds don't cast during slam it's a pretty annoying um and in, it's pretty annoying interrupt um don't stand in the red stuff on the ground and healers make sure you keep everybody topped up um tank position the guys uh when brute does this occasional move um or he files missiles when he lands um position him towards the rocket guy so he takes damage then you're gonna go to, or you're gonna come here, and then you fight him. You do the train event, and you just kind of have to go. Um, Generally, you go here, and then you go here, and then you go here, and then you fight them, and then you go back, and then you walk around, and then you go do the train event, and that takes you here. Then you're gonna fight this boss. This boss is a humongous pain. Um, he is probably the worst boss in the entire raid. And what you're gonna do is, he has a. Uh, you don't actually really fight him to start with. You have to kill a bunch of adds and they will drop um, items for a... Yeah, so once you get him to 60%, he'll... You fight him, just him. You'll get him to 60%. He'll go to his cannon. You need to grab the munitions from the adds and you destroy his cannon then he comes back out and fights you. That's it. But the problem is when there's a whole bunch of adds and people aren't clicking on the right stuff, it gets really hard. So just mind keep and pick someone to do cannons or pick two people to do cannons and everyone stack in one spot and uh, if you get the fire on you run away from the group and stand behind a pillar 
then you won't get hit. Uh, the last boss, Tovra, is really easy. All you have to do is don't stand in the fire. That's it. There's electricity on the ground that you need to avoid. And there's freezing traps that you want to get away from. And that is it. Seriously, that's it. She's probably the easiest boss in the whole dungeon. Uh, the next one is Iron Docks. I have only done this one once. but And I only did it on normal. So I can't really tell you much. All I will say is go here. Fight this guy. Um, he has a wolf. You kill the wolf first. He dismounts. And then he has new attacks. So nothing too exciting there. I'm sorry, I haven't done that. I haven't actually done this one on heroic. And then you walk around. You fight this guy. These are three people. Um, I don't believe they need to die near the same time. You just have to kind of pick one and burn them down. And then you fight this guy. And he'll pounce. And he'll... Uh, ravage so just kind of run away from him as much as you can and then the last one you need to hide behind near the towards when he dies he uh, or no he does it throughout he kind of slams you have to stand behind stuff or you get knocked way back or you take crazy damage so just make sure you're not in the line of fire when the slam comes up I remember that from regular it was kind of annoying and shadow and burial grounds is next and this one is relatively easy first boss nothing special um she will occasionally stand in, she'll occasionally call down runes, and you need to stand on the ones that don't have things on them or you'll take crazy damage. It's a big circle of like phases of the moon on the ground. Don't stand on the one with the purpley bluish stuff on top. Stand on the ones that are empty and you'll be fine. Um, she'll also call down daggers, and you need to pull her away from the daggers and don't fight near the daggers. The closer you are to the daggers, the more damage you take. And I think that's the one with the daggers. Yeah, she's the one with the daggers. Um, and then Nalish is pretty easy. Uh, at least once throughout the fight, depending on how fast you, how fast you click, click him, he will kind of summon, he'll go into a spirit realm and he'll summon, he'll pull you into the spirit realm and he'll sp summon spirit versions of yourself. They're not hard to kill, everyone defeat your own. I don't know if tanks have one or not, I know all DPS and the healers get one. And then as soon as you've defeated them, click on them and then you'll go back to the new realm quicker and you'll be able to heal up and top up whoever else is there. Or, you know, just start killing the boss again. Um, the third boss, Bone Maw, is annoying. He does a body slam, do not stand in it, it will shoot you back. There are two ads on your way there that are the same type. They're like little worms, carrion worms. Um, don't stand in the body slam because it just knocks you way back and it's just really annoying. Um, and then Boma also does an inhale. He does, well, he does little things on the ground that you don't stand in. Like obviously just don't stand in shit on the ground. That's just kind of obvious at this point. Um, he does a uh, an inhale and you have to run directly opposite from him. There'll be a thing on the, there'll be a little thing on the uh, platform there'll be a thing kind of where like where it's coming from you just have to run as far as you can and then he'll the inhale increase and you'll actually start being pulled back if you have a speed boost feel free but if you're on the other side of the platform you'll be fine and he'll eat you and then he'll kind of spit you out if you do get knocked off um go to the little water spout things in the water around the platform it'll shoot you back up onto the platform and then you're going to go around there's a portal you're going to end up over here and you'll fight Nerzul. And Nerzul is not entirely difficult. Um, he will summon runes on the ground that you need to pull him away from and everyone needs to stand away from the runes on the ground. The closer you are, the more damage they do. And uh, he will do a summon like five or six skeletons and they walk in a line. It's like the Sylvanas fight from End Time. And they'll just walk in a line and you gotta pick one. I recommend picking the middle one, but tank just mark one. If you can't, everyone just default to the middle one is kind of what I say. And uh, you kill one, it creates a break in the chain, you can stand there while the rest of them walk past. And he'll do that two or three times until the end of the fight, possibly more if you're not, if you don't have a lot of DPS, but that's about it. And then the last one is Skyreach. Skyreach is tricky. So your first boss is Ranjit. He um, does a lot of wind stuff and you need to avoid it. And this guy's tricky in that you kind of need to keep moving. Uh, melee, it's not a problem. Casters, it can be really annoying. So just kind of bear in mind when he does a move where it's like a four and it just starts turning, or it's like it's like a it's divided the platform into quarters and it just kind of starts turning. Keep in mind which way it's turning and just move with the tank. Um, you don't want to stand in it because you get you take crazy damage. Um, the second boss is the Arachnath, who's a construct. Um, he will. He's pretty straightforward. Um, he can do an interrupt, I believe, for all of everyone if it doesn't get kicked. And he will do these, these beams will come, they'll hit the, there's a ring of little mini uh, prototype guys, construct prototype guys on the ground. These beams will hit them and then they'll go towards the boss to heal him. You need to stand in the way of those beams 
um, they don't do a lot of damage, so you should be okay. And you only need one person per beam, you just have to block it. It works like the uh, the dragon fight in uh, Karzon, essentially, for that way. And then the third boss is Rukron. Rukron uh, is probably the trickiest um, in that <coughs> you start fighting him and then he does a solar flare, and the solar flare summons this little phoenix, and the phoenix will fixate on someone. If the phoenix hits you, it explodes and has a crazy amount of damage. And it, if the phoenix falls, if the phoenix dies on another pile of ashes, you'll get a double spawn. So just make sure that you're not standing near ashes, and that you target the adds as quickly as possible. The other thing they do on um, heroic is they do. A, he does a move called quills, where everyone except the tank needs to duck behind, and uh, the tank can't because as soon as um, there is no one for her to melee with, for uh, Rukron to melee with, she will do a screech attack which hits everyone in the raid no matter where you're standing and does crazy damage. So the tank needs to stay there. If you have a paladin, get them to either bubble the healer or bubble the tank when this ha when screech is coming near towards the end, or bubble themselves to go and heal. But what we had is we had a paladin in our group when it was like four seconds to go, bubbled me, I ran out and I started healing the tank again. Uh, put as many buffs on the tank as you can or as many like hots on the tank as you can before you have to run behind for quills. Quills should only happen twice. And then you're gonna have to do a little bit of running around. Um, there's a wind pattern here just um, you're gonna go up and around. Don't hug the inside when you reach the second loop. You're gonna go to the middle. Just follow the stream of air that's not moving as fast and you'll make your way around. Then the last boss is the high sage. And the high sage is a little bit tricky. You want to fight him near the doors because he does a move and it works a lot of these work like other fights. It works like the Valkyr portion and the unborn Valkyr thing in uh, Ice Crown, where the guy will pick up a party member and just start dragging them off the edge. You need to kill them as fast as possible. Not the party member, the Valkyr, the uh, the bird as it is in this one, um, or they drop off the edge. So ads need to die very very quickly. And he does a beam move and don't stand in the fire. And that's pretty much it for Skyreach. And that is it for dungeons. Um, I haven't done any raids, so I can't really tell you raid stuff. So you'll notice these have like a little range on here. So you get this one at 97 and then heroic is 100. So you can do this at 90, you can do the regular at 97 and then heroic obviously you have to be 100. Um, you will unlock most of the dungeons as you level, but some of them are only level 100. Uh, Ubers is one of them, I believe. Let's find out though. Eastern Kingdoms. Upper Black Rock Spire. Yeah. Oh, you got an Upper Black Rock. Okay, so yeah, you could do it at 90, but it's not the full one. You stop after the third boss uh, for the level 90 one. Um, so for level 100, you actually get to do the last two bosses. But yeah, that is it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. No idea what I'm going to do tomorrow, so feel free to text me or not text me. You guys don't have my cell number. Um, feel free to message me, email me, throw me a question on Twitter or whatever and give me some ideas for what to do for you or I'm just going to keep doing random crap and no one will find it helpful. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Have a beautiful day.